Because you know why? Why? Because it feels right. It feels right. Legendary. Oh, and I hear a lot of noise. <laughs> I hear stomping from Adam Stone's Hobbit feet running to pick up his beautiful little boy, AJ. Here we go. Oh, my goodness. Oh, dude, he's getting cuter and cuter. Oh, my gosh. He looks as excited as Corinna about you doing the podcast. I don't have my headset on. I'm Here just saying, I'm saying random stuff, but. God, he's the so freaking cute. Unreal. What's his temperament like? Is he like pretty chill? Is he excitable? Oh, he can't hear me. Why am I even why am I even asking? Adam doesn't have his headset on. So okay, that was a little cameo by by little baby AJ, not Kohler. And um, yeah, Adam's coming back. Welcome to the It Feels Right podcast. We've never actually done that. We've never done a welcome. I'm I'm Rob Nunnery. Joined by my Beautiful other half, handsome, handsome man, the co-host, cutest. Adam Stone. I was talking about you, Adam, but yeah. Oh, AJ. sorry, sorry. My bad, my bad. I, actually I was too. Uh, I was too. <laughs> <laughs> I actually said welcome to the podcast. Like I said, welcome to the It Feels Right podcast. Like we actually, I actually did like a welcome to the show, which I don't think we've ever done, not once. That's number one. Yeah, that's number one for sure. And uh, it felt right. Yeah, I'm I'm good either way. You know, maybe we should just mix and match. Mix balance, and match. balance is the happy place. We love balance around here, so we got to well, do a little bit of both, Robert. You you know who doesn't like balance? The other AJ. He talked long and hard about that. He's like, I hate that word balance. What's balance anyway? <laughs> do you do you remember that? And, uh, yeah, no, I, I do. <laughs> yeah, I do because it's so important in so many aspects of life. But I just don't do it at all. I'm a obsessive obsessive and then yeah it's it's hard it's hard it's really hard to balance it's really important and i i I don't really love the word either i just use it a lot because you know that's where you want to be well anybody that's gotten to your stature in the world of influencing and high-end content creation adam has to be obsessive and i think that's what's gotten you to where you are today Correct. Yeah. Yeah. I, I really, I really shut off a lot of different aspects of my life to, to lock in uh, to what we're doing right now. And you know what, Robert, I think it's just paid dividends. I'm very happy with my decision. And it's just, you're, you're just at the beginning. You're just the precipice. Mm. Mm. Ooh, that's a good mm. one. I like precipice. I, I knew you would. I, that's why yes. I threw it in there. I wanted yeah. to comment on it. Oh, okay. The, where's the, the hard dates in the back, the pink rocking. I got a little, I, I got We got some of this. You're the freezing. Fuzzy, the you're, horse, you're, the fuzzy dice. Let's go. You're, you're freezing a little bit. Hopefully, I don't know. I don't know if there's because there's a lot of movement on your end, but uh, you did you did lock up there a little bit. But yeah, a lot of hard eights memorabilia in there. So mm-hmm. I, I I can respect that, and I know Tim Parks can can respect that too. Rob, well, that, let's first and foremost. You were across the pond. I didn't even know you were across the pond, Rob. I just was on the interwebs. I was scrolling through a couple of things. I just see you winning gold in England. I'm like, my goodness, there he is. Uh, Tell me a little bit about that uh, English Open. It looked like it was a hell of a time. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, since I started pickleball, it's always been just like, it's been like a really different way of life compared to like how I lived prior to pick prior to ever having pickleball. I, I was very like flexible and never knew where I would be tomorrow, much less, you know, six months from now, which, you know, my schedule now it's, as you know, Adam, it's all, it's always booked pretty far in advance. You know, what tournaments you're playing, you know, where you have to be at these certain dates. And this was kind of the first trip of like, yeah, I'm going to go play a tournament, but I'm going to use travel for fun for a little bit. Cause I hadn't really done that in a long time. And I uh, went to Sweden first, to, straight after Beer City, actually, when we parted ways, Adam, after our beautiful, beautiful, beautiful commentary debut together on that yeah. Thursday, beautiful Thursday afternoon. And, um, and our beautiful sharing of a hotel room, which was also lovely. Uh, didn't even think about that, but that's mm-hmm. also very mm-hmm. important. Um, nothing better than sharing man space with Adam Stone. So anyways, yeah. went straight to Sweden from, well, actually spent a day in Switzerland, Zurich, uh, straight from Beer City, then went to see my sister up in Sweden. She lives only for like another week, about an hour north of a place called Gothenburg, on a like like right on a fjord, like beautiful, beautiful place. I mean, it was uh, uh, a what? 
Right. A f- on a, a what? Fjord. <laughs> Fjord. Uh, please, please elaborate. Please elaborate for Fjord. me. Fjord. It's like uh, you know, like a, a god. You're gonna make me try to do the definition of a fjord. It's like an inlet of water on a sea. I like inlets. Big inlet fan of, of water inlets. on a yes. sea. I don't know if that's the correct definition, but it's a it's a fjord. Very fun yeah, to does, say. Does it have dots on top on on top of the letters? Does it have dots, yeah. accent markers, or anything? Of course. Yeah, I don't, I don't. I don't know which letters, but they all have little yeah, they all have dots on top. dots on top of them. Yeah, yeah. And I don't know. Like I like a lot of people said say Gothenburg as a city name. Some like some people in Switzerland, Switzerland said Gothenburg, and mm-hmm. then then the actual Swedish say it's completely different. So there's gotcha. 78 ways to say the name of that city, and I think I probably said all the wrong ones, but. First time in Sweden was really cool. Uh, it's great to spend time with my sister. Hadn't seen her in a man had to be over five years. So she she had been working at Volvo and Gothenburg, and um, had this beautiful place with her with her. She just got married like last week. It was like a very quick elopement in Turkey. My sister's my sister is pretty similar to me in terms of being kind of free spirit, just letting the wind take her and living, living life how she wants. So really cool uh, to meet him for the first time, to spend time with her. They're actually moving to Valencia, Spain uh, next week. So, um, you know, I was glad to be able to catch her spot in Sweden before she left because she'd been there a couple of years now. And now I just have to go to Valencia to see her. So boots you know, on the ground. Got to have boots on the ground. We, we know all about that, Adam. You got boots on the ground, you go. That's what yeah, you need. You have to. Uh, and and don't, don't go right away. Let her get settled. Let her get the lay of the yeah. land. And then she can just show you around beautifully. And, you know, maybe you'll take your friend and coworker, uh, Adam Stone underscore PB, with you. We'll see. I mean, maybe 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 Valencia needs high-end content creation on the pickleball front. I'm sure I, they yeah. do. Everywhere does. I, 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 w- I would assume that they do. Yes. Yes, definitely. So well, Sweden and then – Popped over to Ireland for about three days to see uh, my friends, the McCurdens, who um, I hadn't seen in a long time. It was really good to connect with them. They got a couple kids, uh, Maggie, who I call Midgey, because, you know, over the pond, there's just like little mosquitoes. You call them Midgies. They're like little pestering mm-hmm. things that bite you. It. So it's always fun to call her Midgey. She doesn't like it. She knew it was coming, too. Um, and then Charlie, who right when COVID started, Charlie's 14 now, now as tall as me. Last time I saw him, he was up to my waist. Mm-hmm. So a little gross spurt, but, and c- during COVID I would play, I would play Charlie in FIFA. He was 11 at the time and we both wear headsets. We'd both like talk shit to each other and he would usually beat me, which like legit made me angry as a mm-hmm. grown adult losing, mm-hmm. losing to a kid, but uh, neither here nor there. Then from there went to, went to Telford, England for the English open where Adam, I have to say, I met a fair amount of it feels right podcast fans Ooh, um, across the pond, eh? Across the pond, which, which you know, you you have people come up to you at tournaments here in the U.S. and you know that kind of feels cool. You're like, oh, that's awesome that you listen to the podcast because you know we 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 enjoy doing it, but we don't really always get feedback on it or hear people like that really enjoy it. And I talk to a lot of people over there that are like, you know, we just always look forward to hearing it. Can't wait for the next one to come out, which was really cool to hear. You know from people that live so far away. So cool to, cool to see that the podcast is reaching an international audience, you know? Yeah. I remember, I remember getting a message from some, some Nordic guy, uh, which is definitely a place that I would really like to go. I only hear good things. Beautiful. Uh, so yeah, I think it, I think it does strike you a little bit more when it's a, a non U S uh, person who has something to say, uh, uh, you just don't really consider it or think, I know it's happening, uh, you know, it's spread all around the world, but it's, it is pretty cool to, to see it firsthand or, or have someone talk to you about it. So that's great. So Robert, you did a great job of uh, balancing work and leisure on this trip. That's a great balance. Yeah. And I have to give a couple of shout outs to some, some, some folks. So like, podcast wise, uh, they did a, like, they organized this pretty well at the English open. So um, in, in some respects, so we had, we had a play with the pro thing. Um, which it was basically be me and an amateur playing another pro and an amateur. So kind of like a pro am, uh, but where we just mixed it up, play two out of three games. So it was really fun to be able to play with, you know, play with different people and they don't see kind of the highest level of pickleball. So it was cool for them to see that aspect of it. There was the dude that we did some clinics that were, the demand was nuts. Like we didn't have enough pros to actually run the clinics properly. I mean, we're talking like 50 plus people and like, 
five or six different sessions. Like the demand for the demand for high level coaching and camps and clinics over there is, is, is pretty intense and pretty nuts. Um, so, you know, back to the shout outs, but I, I got a lot more to talk about in terms of growth and pickleball in Europe and Asia and where it's, where it's going internationally. They're, I would say five plus years behind the U S in terms of, in terms of growth and where it needs to be in terms of infrastructure and all, and all those things. But, um, I met a lovely man named Derek who don't know how old he is, but, but definitely older, um, had suffered from a stroke at some point, like ha- has to learn to walk again, all of that stuff. I mean, he was managing when I saw him, he was, he was upright and walking and just taking it all in, wasn't playing, but you could tell a big pickleball fan loved, loved the sport, got a picture with him at some point. Um, but really like really touching, talking to him, uh, Malin, who was also over there with me traveling and also playing four or five mix had chatted with him quite a bit. And she told me a story. She was like, yeah, he was saying that like, you know, he was suffered a stroke and was going through all this recovery. And like one of the things that he really looked forward to was listening to, to your podcast. Wow. And it's like, it like literally gave me goosebumps. I was like, Whoa, that's, that's insane. Um, so that's like one of the things that he would do while he was like recovering from a stroke is just listen to the pod and catch up on them. And so really, really just cool to meet, meet him. And, um, yeah, so shout out to him. It was just, dude, it was so cool just getting over there, talking to everybody about pickleball and what's going on over there and what needs they have and the struggles. And, um, I mean, there's a laundry list of people that I met that I really enjoyed talking, talking to and uh, we'll hopefully keep in contact with. But, um, yeah, courts, courts, court infrastructure is a big issue. Most of it's on, you know, as it was in the U.S. initially, on hardwood floors, gymnasiums. Um, the challenge with that is most of those most of those courts and floors are shared with badminton, are shared with different schools, are shared with um, yeah dance troops, all all that stuff. And pickleball is kind of the lowest on the totem pole, so they get the worst hours. So I think there's a there's a big need for court infrastructure in Europe, and I think um, I think it will actually help drive demand a little bit if. You know, there might not be the demand. Like you, you'll still go to Europe and England and say, you know, talk to somebody about pickleball, and they're like, "Well, what's pickleball?" So it's not to the point of like the fever pitch that is that it is in the U.S. Because in the U.S. now, it, that's like everybody kind of knows what it is because it's it's everywhere. So I don't know. I just see massive opportunity in Europe and Asia, and it's 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 going to keep going quick over there. Yeah, no, I I think so, and of, of course, infrastructure is so important. And when, when you do have the crappy hours and you are uh, sharing with badminton or whatever else, you, you do get the real, real junkies, though. Those those players, if they're if they're setting up their own nets, they're 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 taking the bad hours and they're still playing. Uh, we got a little bit of that in Croatia. Uh, we did a pickleball getaway and there was this uh, <laughs> one lady who was just I, I mean, she is the definition of a pickleball enthusiast. So uh, you, you, they, you really do get uh, the, those select few that are just so into it. And uh, when, when you talk to, to players like that and people like that, it, it, it definitely leaves, uh, leaves some impact. And you remember those conversations. So uh, nice job, Robert. Way to, way to do it for pickleball. And I, I just don't see how international and uh, uh, things of this nature moving forward are not going to get bigger and bigger. Yeah. And it was cool to just see the excitement, man. Like, like they, it, again, it's like, it's like how pickleball was. I would imagine Adam, you started before me kind of like when you first started where like yeah. everybody is so freaking stoked on the sport. They're mm-hmm. so freaking stoked to all be at it. Like, I mean, there are 1100 people at this tournament. It was for even us standards, a gigantic tournament, 40 courts on pickleball United courts and this massive uh, massive venue indoor basically had indoor exhibition halls essentially is what it was each court was kind of um, individualized so their you know balls weren't rolling all over the place which is pretty nice like they did a they did a really good job um, there are some issues with the courts in terms of um, not so much the pickleball united courts they played great it was what it was the you know venue hall service underneath that had random spots that weren't like, you know, some had little gutters, some had little like pokey Mm -hmm. things. Um, So, but in terms of the actual courts, it was really cool to see, 
you know, you know, for people that are used to playing on gymnasium hardwood floors, quite an adjustment to come in and see like real courts being laid down. And uh, is, uh, Robert is individualized a word. It is. It is. It is today. Okay. You know? All right. Just I, I didn't know. I wasn't actually saying that with full confidence. I was just wondering. Yeah, I, I, I have no idea. We can, we can. Um, I Somebody guess look that up. <laughs> what what I what I do like actually is you can as long as you say a word, even if it's not a real word, but it gets the point across of like what you want to say. I'm all about people go. like making up those words. Yeah, I'm with it. You know, as Strategi- long as just, as strategery. Yeah, strategery. So, you know, yeah, I know exactly what you mean with strategery. Exactly, of course. So, <laughs> of course. so yeah, it was just <clears throat> I don't know. I don't remember where I was going with that, but um, yeah, I mean, big event, big venue. Oh, I don't remember now. Uh, just the <laughs> just the just the pure raw excitement of of pickleball people being at a tournament like that i mean dude people were so freaking stoked so happy to play so happy to just watch it was the environment like was just unparalleled to any any tournament i've ever been to in terms of the joy for the game sounds like uh canadian nationals about five years ago it's just everyone's bright eyed everyone everyone has that that look and i know it's it, it's it's hard to really grab exactly what it is. You kind of have to experience it. You can't really talk your way through that kind of energy, uh, yeah. especially. But I know exactly what you're talking about. And uh, I unfortunately feel that a little less and less. It's still there. It's still there. But, uh, you know, I, I have no doubt just what you said five years ago there uh, from what it was here five years ago. So I can I can kind of match up those energies and kind yeah. of and kind of figure out exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. And, and one thing that, you know, when I was in Ireland on the West, I was on the West coast of Ireland, little, little town called Ballyvon, pretty close to like the cliffs of Moore, uh, just really stunning wow. landscape over that there. Was, that was legit. You said the name, the cliffs <laughs> of Moore. my goodness. Uh, hey, continue, please I, continue. I did it. And I was of course looking up, like this was, I hadn't touched a pickleball paddle. This is a couple of days leading up to the English open. And I was like, ah, I'd be good to, be good to get some reps, even if on a gym floor, just to, just to, you know, start tracking the ball with my eye, that kind of thing. Cause I feel like when I, whenever I take a layoff and I come back, like the hardest thing for me is just to like, if I haven't seen a pickleball moving, it's just to get the ball, like tracking the ball, if that makes any sense whatsoever. It's not even the touch no. or the feel. It's just like Big time. just Big tracking time. the ball with my eyes. So even on a gym floor, it's just like, just, you know, getting some touches is all I wanted. So I found, um, or my, my friend Philip found a guy in a place called, Kinvara uh, named Paul and Paul led us into the facility, the gymnasium floor, set up a net for us, a temp net, had some touches, played a game with him. And uh, he was actually playing the English open with his wife. So was able to connect with him and he watched some of my matches on mixed day. And um, yeah, just dude, just, just the excitement people have for pickles unreal. And um, he was like, it's like there's another family that's here from Ireland, the Fitzpatrick's. They have their own pickleball. They built their own pickleball court in the in their backyard. So it's just kind of like a cement, you know, level cement in their backyard with lines and a net. And it's just like, dude, the 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 zest for the game is strong, and it's only going to get stronger. It's only going to keep growing over there. And I just saw Judy Murray tweeted th- nice. about their first permanent pickleball court in Scotland, nice, and, and a place called Cromlick. So it'll be. Uh, It'll be interesting, dude. It's gonna it's gonna be on the rise quick. And I, I think wanna... oh 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 sorry. My, my main Please. point my main Please. point was that when I was hitting when I played some with Paul, Paul was just like he's like, you know what? It's just not the same watching on YouTube versus watching in person. Like you don't get a true sense and appreciation of like what you guys actually do with the ball until you see it in person. And I probably had, dude, I probably had twenty people come up to me and say that. And they're like, Thank you so much for coming over. Um, this is what's going to help grow pickleball in Europe is you guys coming over showing, you know, kind of showing people what it's like and how you play and the actual true speed of the game. And they're like, yeah, just thank you. Everybody's so stoked to see kind of like that level and it's going to help grow. So really cool, dude. I, I would urge any pros that are listening to this, like go do stuff outside the typical circuits. If you can, I guess you can, if you're locked into PPA and, uh, but you go, go teach camps or something. Um, even if you don't play any events, uh, just because people are so stoked on it and, you know, we want the sport to keep growing and where it's going to grow the most from here on out, it's going to be internationally. There you go. 
I mean, who doesn't want to play a game with the Fitz, Fitzpatrick's near the Cliffs of Moore? I mean, come on. I mean, that's, that's <laughs> what it is. Uh, but uh, it's it's here, here's this for an analogy, and you might not think this is normal, but I I what I think when I think of energy and everyone everyone is happy no matter what. I think of Vegas on a Friday night. So it's like these people, they, they work all week, they get their girls trip or their guys trip or whatever. And then they go to Vegas for their weekend. And it's like everyone at like Friday at seven or eight or nine, seven to 10 PM is just in the happiest mood to be there. They're having a couple of drinks. They're hanging out with their friends. They're having dinner and good energy is good energy. You can't replicate that. And when you're with a group of people that has that, it's very infectious and it's very fun. So I'm, I'm, I'm with it. Yeah. I mean, that's a, yeah, I like that analogy. Um, with pickleball, I mean, at these tournaments, it, it lasts, you don't, you don't have the crazy hang, hangover like you do in Vegas. Like, you know, after, <laughs> yeah, that, right, yeah. after that energy in Vegas, the next day you're like, why did I do this? Yeah. Well, for <laughs> me, for me, it's more like 72 hours. After. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> like I start, I start feeling normal about Thursday morning after a trip like that, uh, on the weekend. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's, that, that's definitely a real thing. <laughs> no doubt. Uh, Man, so yeah, so we had we had a couple tournaments in between. It's been a couple weeks for us. Yeah. So you you had your whole spiel, and I was doing my thing in Lakeside, Ohio, doing some teaching with Corinne and Simone and Chad. So uh, uh, yeah, we we had your kind of maybe not the debut, but the it, the extended debut of you on the mic at the Beer City Open for singles, and I thought it was lovely, Robert. You did a great job, and uh, yeah. we had some we had some good pickle that weekend, some good commentary, and that's that's what it's all about. Yeah, it was super fun, man. I um I had done I had a little warm up commentary I think the week prior with uh, I just hopped in CBS Sports Network with Dave Benz at the Fenway series okay. yeah, for yeah. for singles. So got a little got did my toe in the water there for color just as a purely a warm up to be you know beside you doing color. Wait, well, well, there's there's two things, Rob. There's two things. One. We don't dive on concrete. We don't <laughs> dive on concrete. Dylan does. That was, it was such a good sound bite. It was such a good sound uh, bite. And if you want to win singles matches, just get that serve deep. All you got to do is get that serve deep Adam, and then go win some singles matches. Come on. God, just we talked about it. So, or, yes, we didn't talk about it. I talked about it so much. <laughs> <laughs> I, I could not say it. Like, why yeah. am I? Like, am I crazy? Am I the only one seeing that you have to hit a hard, deep serve in singles to win points? Like it's part of the deal. And I started is, just setting you up for it. Just setting <laughs> you up. Like, Rob, Rob, what do you think about that? What do you see here? Thing? Yeah. <laughs> Shallow and soft. Is that, yeah. the, is that the right surf, Rob? <laughs> is that the right surf? Oh man. Goodness gracious. That was, that was uh, good fun though. And it was, yeah, it's fun to, it was fun to play a tournament outside of, outside of an APP with Andre. Um, so we got, we got kind of the tough side of the draw with, uh, keep, keep with, going with baby dill and jada um who we played in the semis i believe it was yeah we played them in the semis um and just honestly just got mowed down by them neither of us played well um we just couldn't score on serve and uh, of course baby dill and jada are you know just taking home a few ppa golds in a row now so they're they're playing really well um and then i think who was on the other side connor garnett and rafa hewitt Got through the other side by beating Pablo and Fed, and then uh, Andre and I beat Jay and Jay de Villiers and Zay Navratil before we played to get to the bronze, and then we played Federico and Pablo to win the bronze. So yeah, it was was good to see kind of outside that APP, APP bubble and play some different players, which is a lot of fun. And uh, I'm gonna ride that into St. Louis this weekend with Big Andre. Big Andre, yeah, that's true, and it. it and I know it's it, the, there's a lot of mixing and matching in between tournaments between APP and PPA players for playing, but it's different in a tournament situation. So yeah. you you can play rec with them, and you can mix in with those players, which obviously a lot of the you know the two tours are doing. But in that tournament situation, it's a little special and a little bit different. So I, I imagine getting into those situations uh, it, it was great for you, and like you said, to to springboard you moving forward, Robert. I just wanted to say maybe this wasn't the exact color you were looking for, but you left something in the hotel room. And it is a bronze medal from the Beer City Open, who also functions as a bottle opener. 
And I wanted to tell you that I'm proud of you, Robert, and I'm going <laughs> to keep this for you for getting that medal. And uh, I just wanted to share that with everyone. There you go. Adam, yeah, fun fact about me. I never, I, I have zero medals from any event I've ever played. I usually, you know, I didn't mean to give that one to you, but I'm happy it landed in good hands and has a good home. Mm -hmm. For example, after New York City APP uh, got gold and men's and mixed and, you know, was talking to our, was talking to our cab driver about pickleball on the tournament and because he picked us up at Flushing and was like, what in the world's going on here? And, you know, gave the whole spiel about pickleball. He's like, oh, it's so cool. And so, you know, I usually gift my medals to random people and he has both those gold medals, that cab driver. So, you know, just want to give want to give the hardware to everybody so that's right what a guy i just what, don't what a guy i don't know some people some people like holding on to those and keeping them as memories I, I just you know i'm not very i don't have to my name i have four bags like all my possessions or, or <laughs> a lot bags. of weight it's a lot of weight extra weight if you're carrying around your medals you know right right can't do it <laughs> but literally I, I, but i have i don't have very much like i don't have attachment to things it can stuff at all, really. So clearly, as I only have four bags to my name, and two of which are at my buddy's house in Salt Lake City, which I don't know if I'll ever see him again. But my, well, the bags, not my buddy. Right. Well, like I said, it's not going to get any more use anywhere else than in uh, Casa de Stone. So uh, <laughs> it's it's in the right spot for being being functional and and using it to the best of its ability. So speaking anyway. of Casa de Stone, what's the progress on this compound and this pickleball court that we need to have in your backyard? I know it's a process. So we, we, uh, just yes, two days ago, we got the shed out of the back. Uh, so now I've got to take out a chain link fence. So I have to get junk removal to take out a chain link fence. And then we have to get uh, level, level the backyard or grade, grade the backyard and do a retaining wall before putting in the court. So it's painful. The retaining wall is it's going to be, I would imagine it's going to be five figures to do it right. Uh, so it's, it hurts, it hurts a little bit and there's a lot more steps in the process and it's a, it's a beautiful sloped backyard, but it is causing some issues as well. Yeah. That's, it's never as simple as you hope it to be, right? No, gosh. Yeah. And I mean, you got to like figure out where lines and pipes are before you dig. And then we want to do this and we want to do that. And it, it really is a process and, you know, asked me six months ago and said, there's no chance we're going to have to wait till next year, but that might be the situation we're in. So, you know, you should uh, talk to, you should talk to Mr. Drake Bernstein. He, uh, he oh. put a, he put a court in his back on his sloped backyard. Mm -hmm. Drake. So he yeah, might, he, uh, he might have some advice. Yeah. Well, there you go. Anytime I can talk to Drake, that's, that's fine with me. Maybe I'll give him a shout. Hey, he's, he's no longer on my top 25, but he was on the initial list at number hey, 25. So uh, look, look, <laughs> look, Drake's, Drake's probably still better than me and probably doesn't yeah. play the ball. <laughs> Seriously. Like yeah, he probably so, is. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, okay. So I guess that's probably all we should touch on the beer city open. seems like it was nine months ago. Uh, I'm sure you yeah. got a nice little recap when I was recovering your bronze medal here, Robert. Uh, but we had one last weekend as well here at the uh, Newport Beach. Uh, so is it that is it the is it the racket and paddle? Is it the tennis and pickleball club? What 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 is it? I don't know. Newport? I, no, I think the Takea. Yeah, the Takea. Takea was at uh, Los Cab. So that's oh Valley. Oh, so it was not at uh, Newport Beach, uh, whatever. I do not, okay, I do not believe so. It was, okay. at, it was at Los Cab, uh, kind of a new, well, not, Adam, you know where Los Cab is. We've, you saw me, you saw me hit the most forehand winners in, in any singles match you've ever witnessed. Oh, that was California Open? Where the yeah. California Open? Right 2020, yes. right when COVID hit. I remember that. I remember that. Um, and Robert, your girl, HTB. Had a pretty nice tournament, Hurricane Tyra Black. Uh, yep. I believe, <laughs> I don't know what it was, four months ago, five months ago in Daytona, losing 0-0 to Anna Lee Waters. Uh, I commentated that match, and it was it was a little dicey. Uh, there was uh, not a lot of flow for her, and Anna Lee was doing her things. And sure enough, just a few short months later, uh, she's pulling off a huge upset and uh, uh, winning gold uh, in, a, in a stacked PPA event. Uh, pretty impressive from Hurricane Tyra. Yeah, super impressive stuff. Um, I was just, you know, it's amazing what happens when you're not falling over. 
Yeah, right. Yeah, we, we, yeah, we, we commentated. We were on the mic for that one at the Beer City Open, which was a little weird. I don't know if it was some mental, some physical, or it was just all mental. But either way, there was something hey. going on with the sliding and the falling. But hey, she, she cleaned it up. And I didn't really see much of that in the little bit that I saw uh, of, of this past PPA this past weekend. Yeah, it turns out she's pretty good when she's on two feet. <laughs> no i mean it's it's it is interesting to see though she uh what was the beer city result she lost to georgia is that right very close in a very close match yes yeah and then it just just goes to show like how like the margins are getting slimmer on the women's single side which is really good to see i mean you know georgia's playing good singles as well um obviously tyra beating anna lee um very very impressive because that's just what a week is that, is that one week, two weeks later after Beer City? So, I mean, just to see the kind of that incremental progress is yep. is interesting. And, um, you know, Anna Lee's been playing a very long time and Tyra has not. So, you know, trending trending in the right direction for sure. So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll see how it continues to evolve. But, yeah, big, big result for Tyra and just a huge congratulations to her. She, she, she's been working really hard. Yeah, and a, and a quick little shout out to Hard Eights. Yana Grechkina Newell, who uh, made a nice yeah. championship Sunday, and man, anyone anyone who's making deep runs on the single side with a very limited wingspan, I have a lot of respect for. That's a lot of great footwork from her, and, and a lot of shot making to be able to get to championship Sunday with uh, you know not much not much reach uh, up at the kitchen line. So a uh, great yep. job from her, and nice job from all the ladies, and some OG sightings on the men's side with Baby K. Gabriel Joseph uh, making it to Championship Sunday and not just making it uh, a two-game victory over Federico Stacks route to, to seal gold. Uh, awesome job by him. Been a while since he's really been in the mix, but it seems like he's been playing more the last few months in some of these tournaments, especially on the West Coast. So nice job from, from Gabe. Uh, big wins along the way, and then, of course, sealing the deal uh, on Sunday. I mean – surprising but also like not entirely i mean mm -hmm. his results haven't been great on the year i think i saw somewhere maybe gartman uh posted on twitter that he hadn't oh, he, he hadn't gotten past a quarterfinal and I, I believe it was 10 events this year okay um right. and then and then makes a run to the singles final and and takes it but i you know talent wise skill wise especially playing in his own backyard where he where he typically plays best and has has a lot of support um yeah i mean obviously job well done he he ran through some studs guys that are playing really well i think he beat connor garnett who's playing incredibly well uh took down stacks and uh yeah i mean just big props yeah and he and i i think that's not to mention just playing in your backyard meaning the ball the temperature everything is kind of what you're used to. It's the balls traveling and flying through the air, what you're expecting. It's not going up to, you know, down to Florida or, or up to, to say Salt Lake city, which we're going to be here in a, in a, in a week. So, uh, but also baby K Gabe Joseph, he's a pretty emotional guy. He is, he wears his emotions on his sleeve. So I think having a couple buddies, maybe uh, a lady friend or some family there to support you that he can, you know, look at, show his frustration in between points and kind of get that out of the system to play his best. So I think it makes a lot of sense uh, for not just a physical, a mental perspective for him to have a nice run uh, in, in Southern California, that uh, the spot that he loves and plays his best, like you said. Yep. Yep. So uh, nice job. Uh, any, let's see. So for, for the doubles, we had, uh, we had the Johnsons versus uh, Collins, Ken and Anna Lee. Uh, and that, do you know what happened there? I mean, I know that they won. Was it tight at all? I did not see a lot of the championship Sunday, unfortunately. I didn't, I didn't see it either. Um, and, yeah. And then we had the kids, uh, Mr. Mr. Colin, uh, right side specialist, right side stud had a little bit of a unfortunate incident on the left side where he, he kind of blew out a tire, uh, went down, took a, Took a ball to the chest from Eric Lang into the face <laughs> after he fell down. And so, yeah, it's tough. with The kids, Dylan and J-Dub, they've been in that situation several times recently. They haven't been able to get over the hump uh, uh, against that team. 
So it's tough. There's a lot of people chatting about, oh, I didn't mean anything. Maybe this gives them a little uh, mental bump, even though uh, Colin was injured to get over that hump. Uh, what, what do you think about about that match and, and Colin being a little bit injured uh, going into it? Yeah, I mean, even on men's double, I mean, that happened, what, on Friday and mixed? And then men's doubles day, he was obviously a little hobbled, but still they beat, you know, they still kind of, they still kind of crew got pretty cruisy to the, to the final. So he was still playing well, doing his role and making the shots he needed to. Um, I mean, they beat good teams, not like right. they just kind of <laughs> just walked over bad teams. Sure. So, and then, you know, so to have another day where he's only playing the one match, I think, you know, I, I don't take anything away from the victory for, for J-Dub and Dill. I think oftentimes it's even harder, right? When you see somebody cross the net, that's, you know, a little hobbled or a little limited in what they can do because then you overthink it and you try to, you know, you try to overanalyze. So I think they just stuck to the game plan and, and yeah, and pulled out the victory, which, you know, I don't think it takes anything away from what they've done. I mean, that's, that's a big W another gold. And I think it's just going to, their confidence is going to keep growing more and more. Yeah, it, it is a weird situation sometimes when your opponent is is slightly injured. So it is good uh, mental focus and following the game plan to, to stick through that. Uh, but yeah, really, I mean, I think that there was a couple times, obviously, whether it was court positioning or over swinging that Collins brother uh, went for a bit much. But it wasn't like it was completely different from their normal kind of strategy and, and where they are slightly hobbled. Sure. Huge, huge difference. Uh, probably not. So, uh, yeah, I'm with you. you. Yeah. You have to, you have to give some credit regardless of the situation and, you know, hopefully this does kind of work its way into a, a rivalry, even if it's not 50, 50, just something where there's always a chance, uh, that, and we know that, 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 that two seater, three seater, whatever they is, uh, has, has a shot to, to win every, every time in championship Sunday. And I think we're moving towards that. Yeah, I agree. And I, th I think one, one thing that's important that I've seen out of J-Dub and I started seeing it first at beer city and I've talked about it a lot that maybe not on the pod, but I've talked to other people about it is that J-Dub's limited in his ability and his ceiling because he's not willing to develop attacks off the bounce, you know, baby dill, great attacks off the bounce can hit good spots, always ready for the second, for that second shot. Um, I've started to see Jada speed, speed up the forehand off the bounce and f at a very good frequency, not often, but when he does it, you know, obviously he's going to be ready for that second ball and he's putting that first ball in really good spots. So I think really, really, really good to see that from Jada in terms of his development, in terms of him getting better. Uh, cause that was always kind of the one criticism, criticism that I had is that, uh, and not that he's not incredible at everything else he does. He was just limited. You always felt safe if you got the ball to bounce in front of him. Whereas in now you got to worry about that speed up off the forehand side, off the bounce. So it's just one more layer that's going to put you on your heels a little bit that you have to worry about. Even if he doesn't do it often, you know he can do it. So it's really good to see him showing that attack. And I think it's going to, you know, it's just going to make them even more dangerous as he continues to develop more weapons. Lot lobs as well. So I know yeah. it was a special, special situation uh, with an injury, but I, I think that that's kind of a point of emphasis anyway, uh, to sprinkle that in. I've seen it at other tournaments leading up to this, not just uh, uh, the match where, where Colin was injured. So uh, do we, we saw the little shoulder thing from baby Dill and beer city open. So it, it, it they're, they're, they're tinkering, you know, they're, yeah. they're, they're not completely changing their games, but they're tinkering and adding little tidbits or, or possibly taking, taking away something that they're doing too much. So to see them kind of figuring it out and trying to work and not just beating their head against a wall every time is really great to see from, from the young kids. And yeah, I mean, there's a lot of, not a lot of time, but a decent amount of time left. And we talked about possibly being the number one team at the end of 2023. Uh, they still have some time to accomplish that, uh, yep. even though it's good, it's going to be a tall task. Yeah. And I think we, we'd be remiss not to talk about, you know, kind of the, the Matt and Riley situation where yeah. Riley dropped Matt to maybe pursue other partnerships that might have a higher ceiling, even if it's a lower floor. And I think we've, we've, we've seen the lower floor right now. Yeah. Well, wait, well, he picked, he picked two, two great partners for high, high ceiling, low floor as, yep. as AJ and Julian are uh, extremely explosive and, and can win 
uh, win matches or, or multiple matches in certain stretches, but but that, that bottom can drop out from time to time. And, and just like you said, uh, we haven't seen horrific results, uh, but definitely not pushing through to the later rounds that we were thinking uh, could possibly happen in either one of those partnerships. Well, yeah. that's good. That's good. Dude, 20, 27, <laughs> 27 medals in a row is something. Yeah, right. That's what I'm saying. That's good. I mean, whatever whatever you want to say and playing his absolute best to Julian and AJ, you know, with their, a little more of their physicality, m- maybe they have a slight edge on Matt. But I tell you what, that dang floor is way higher with with Matt as he's he's very skilled and very consistent. And, you know, whether whether he's playing a little more grindy or speeding up, it, it's all for a reason. And the pickleball IQ is high uh, with, 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 with that man. So, uh, you know, I want, I want to just be like, you discredit, ah, oh, man, uh, this is the one, this is the tournament yeah. that, that you really see him struggling with age and whatever, da, 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 da. but he's, he's always in the mix. He's always right in there. And, and the hand speed and, and the counter attack ability is, it's just good. It's just good. He's good. There's no, he's I mean, there's, literally, there's literally no way around it. He's, he's yeah. just, he's good. He, his yeah, he's his good, so. movement hasn't slowed down. His hands haven't slowed down. He's, I mean, for men's doubles, as relevant as he's ever been, in my opinion. Sure, absolutely. And Rob, of course, we must talk about the walk-off celebration of Anna Lee Waters on singles. <laughs> it was, uh, yeah. it was definitely an interesting reaction, and uh, really, I think that there's probably four people that can fully understand <coughs> what Anna Lee is going through, and you know. It's it's a lot of winning. It's it's it, clearly at the top of her game, and uh, to have I mean, in the U.S. we like underdogs. We if someone is winning a lot, you can kind of feel the energy going towards that underdog. They want to see a new player rise to the top, a new team rise to the top. So it is a tough situation, especially for someone as young as her. And of those four people, it's old school Kyle Yates. Old school Simone Jargine and current Annalie Waters and current uh, Collins' brother. So those are really the only four people, in my opinion, who've had extended stretches of dominance in this game of pickleball. And there is only one person who I have not seen it really bother, and that's Collins' brother. There was stretches where Kyle was having big issues with players rooting against him or rooting more for the other team. I've seen Simone have issues with that as well. Obviously, Anna Lee recently. Uh, so, it, so it's a real thing. Do you have any general thoughts or what do you think about that situation of being at the top and it being a lonely place? Yeah, I think she probably places, and not just her, but you know, I think there's there's really high expectations around her. I think she was actually was well, she she was going for a record this weekend, like right? It was seventh, seventh or something, triple was, crown or something. Maybe seventh consecutive or seventh. Yeah, or, I don't, I don't yeah. know, but <laughs> something stupid, right? So I mean, you know, a loss in women's singles, um, to whatever, right? Like I don't think it takes away from anything that she's accomplished, like the. The results have been insane this year. She's been so dominant and it hasn't really even been close. She hasn't really been pushed that much either um, outside of a few matches. So um, yeah, I mean, the reaction, the reactions, whatever it's, it's, I, I, to me, it's, you know, a little sad, a little sad for her uh, from the pressure she's probably feeling. And I think, you know, I don't, I don't know what, what prompted it. I heard it might've been like her mom trying to give her, uh, trying to encourage her to have more positive body language throughout that last game uh, to stay positive. And that was kind of like her, like, you know, you happy now uh, with this positive body language. Mm-hmm. So I, I don't know if that's the actual case. It would make a lot of sense. Um, and yeah, I just, it's a lot of pressure and I think she's going to, she's going to handle it fine and she's going to come back and she's going to continue to be a great player. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I hear it. Yeah. So that, that makes sense with, with some of the stuff with possibly with Lee waters or maybe just celebrating that, you know, the fans rooting for the underdog got what they wanted yeah. uh, with them winning, but it, it, it is tough. It, it's tough to, to, to know exactly what that feeling is, but at the same time, it's also tough that it's just been such an uncontrollable amount of winning. And then the first loss that there's a reaction like that, if that, if that makes sense, you know, so maybe, maybe if that builds or you have a few losses, uh, but to go right from, you know, winning 
whatever, 18 consecutive events, you, you take a loss and then have a really strong, uh, unusual reaction. Uh, it was probably bad timing a little bit in that regard. But it, it, it is, you know, I, I didn't just bring up those four names for no reason. It, it is something that, you know, I, I got to a pretty high ranking in the sport, but I was never alone at the top and it's very different. Uh, so yeah, who knows exactly the feelings that are going on there, but it, it, it is, it is something that we'll have to continue to monitor because she's, yeah. she's a young woman and she's in a, a special place. And, and I'm sure this is not the last, uh, little bit, uh, one of these things that happens, uh, in her career. So, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, you always want to see a gracious loser, right? Um, especially when you win so much, um, because that's what really tells the story. I mean, it's easy to it's easy to win matches and go thank the refs and thank everybody, um, but to do that after you lose a, a heartbreaker <laughs> is what is what really tells the story, in my opinion. So, um, yeah, uh, it's it, again, it's. It's hard to manage that in the moment, but that's, you know, I think that's what you gotta, you gotta work towards and do. And, um, you, you, you're going to make a ton of money in the sport more than, more than kind of the next, honestly, she's probably going to make more than the next, you know, eight or, you know, beyond, beyond the top two or three players, she's going to make more than the rest combined potentially. So yeah. when you're in the, when you're in that kind of position, you know, you, you gotta, you gotta be able to handle the losses just as well as you handle the wins. That's right. Got to have that balance, Robert. Oh, God. You did it. You did it. You did it. You did it. Yeah. So, uh, but you're right, though. You're right. It's, it's, it's special rewards in terms of, you know, pickleball fame, monetary. Uh, so when you have these special res- re- rewards and you're, you're doing, you're playing this game, this sport, uh, which is, it's tough for all these guys with the travel and everything they're doing, but you have to understand that and, and you have to take, those extra things that go with it, uh, as part of the deal. And it'll never, it'll never be perfect, but you got to find a way, uh, to, to understand that and, and keep it calm in those situations, even though it's tough. Yeah. Yeah. It's at the end of the day, it's just pickleball. Just pickleball. Oh, wait, did that, that's what Jimmy said, right? Big Papa Jimmy. It's just, just pickleball. Everybody, everybody gets in trouble. You just say, say the wrong thing. People want to get you. I know it's been yeah. like that for a while now, but it's, you know, it's sad to see sometimes. Yeah, it is. It is. But what else we got, Adam? I don't know. So, uh, hold on. So you're going to TOC? Yeah. So I'm going to do, I'm going to do TOC. And I, I was just with, I, I had this mismark down here. So I, I was just with Simone for a couple of weeks and we, we had a, a nice little conversation and I talked to, to K-Mac on the phone, Kyle McKenzie. And we were just talking about the landscape of pro coaching yeah. And uh, we, we've all three had some interest from players and, you know, we're not quite at a tennis situation where you can travel with a team and, and those kind of things. So we just yeah. had a little talk about how how fun and enjoyable it is to work with a high level player and how to monetize that. And uh, Simone's got a nice little setup down there in South Florida. So she's she can have people come to her in between tournaments. And that's what I'm kind of trying to get to uh, yeah. Kyle McKenzie is also building a court up in the PNW. So uh, it, it, it's, I just think it's an interesting topic to see how that is going to kind of work itself out because it's a very important part of pretty much all sports. Uh, once you get to that higher level it is the ability to have a team around you, some coaching on court and off court stuff. So uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll keep talking about this on the pod and I think it'll get kind of ironed out and we'll, we'll get in a situation where we could start working with some of these players, which would be great. I like that. Is, uh, is, is mixed on Thursday at TOC and singles on Wednesday. Is that correct? Correct. So we, we have a championship Saturday situation for the tournament of champions. So okay. I'll be traveling on Tuesday. I'll be working Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And then Michelle McMahon and Dave Fleming will have championships Saturday. Uh, and Oh, Brigham City, Utah. I got a lot of good memories in Brigham City from early tournaments, so I, I'm excited to see a couple people and uh, uh, watch some good pickleball. And not this weekend, next. Yeah, I'll 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 be there as well, so it'll be fun. I'm playing uh, playing mix with Susanna Barr and then playing men's with Rettenmeyer, so that'll be oh, a new par- new partnership. Yeah, the dark horse, the net lord, and 
and the rattlesnake. Uh, the rattlesnake. I mean, my goodness, you got it, you got it, you got it all. The rattlesnake. It's good stuff. But uh, yeah, so I, I I got nothing nothing else on my sheet. Uh, covered some nice topics there, and uh, both of us with that extended absence, you across the pond, uh, myself in Ohio. Uh, we'll we'll get back to to at least weekly episodes moving forward, crew, and uh, let's go. Oh, I uh, yeah, it was kind of too late notice for for this episode, but. I did have a text message from a, from a colleague and, um, you know, another player on tour who uh-huh. said he wanted to come on the pod to talk about the pro XR paddle. So, oh, oh. so, so uh, maybe are we, we'll, are we, not, are we not sharing that name? Um, we'll share like- it. We'll, we'll share it when they come on and okay. they can, they can just talk about it, but apparently they got stuff, they got stuff to say about it. So I'm all for Ooh. it. I like it when players have stuff to say. Yeah, that's, that's good. It's, it's hey, that's look, good. it's it's that's it's right. good for the podcast. That's for sure, <laughs> <laughs> and it's just more fun. So you know, so maybe maybe we'll record that here in the next few days, and I like and, that, and get that out too. Well, I, I think that that is exactly what we should do. Until then, Robert, it's goodbye. A, been a blast. Bye, everybody. Bye. Because you know why? Why? Because it feels right. It feels right. Legendary. Yeah.